Whether you've been watching our videos, talking to your friendly neighborhood barista, or just reading the instructions on your bag of beans, you've probably noticed that the world of coffee is obsessed with weighted measurements. For many longtime coffee lovers, this shift away from scoops and ounces towards a notably more metric and weight-based vocabulary might seem like a needless complication, but in reality, it's the first step to making great coffee, no matter what you brew with. Let's take a look at a couple of quick examples to see why using volumetric measurements can lead to problems. We'll start with coffee makers. Imagine you go to make your morning pot of coffee and toss the usual five scoops or so of beans into your grinder. The next day, you get adventurous and try out a new blend, using the same five scoops. If we weigh the five scoops of each coffee, it's immediately apparent there's a pretty big discrepancy in weight. This is because Little Buddy is a lighter roast, so the beans are considerably denser than the dark roasted beans we have in Bronson. This means that second batch of coffee using Little Buddy is significantly stronger than how you'd usually make it, because there's that much more coffee in the basket. You might end up thinking that coffee is a little too bitter or strong, when in reality you might end up loving it if you had a more precise way of measuring your coffee. Enter the scale. Weighted measurements allow you to ensure that you're using a consistent amount of coffee each time you brew. Not only does this help you ensure that your go-to coffee is delicious every time, but it also enables you to try out new coffees knowing that you're brewing them as intended. Next, let's look at two shots of espresso. For both shots, I'll use a 20 gram dose and pull them until they reach the one and a half ounce mark on this shot glass. At a glance, it might seem like we've pulled both shots according to the same recipe, but let's check both shots on a scale. Despite the fact that both shots have the same volume, the shot on the right weighs much less than the one on the left. The shot on the right was a darker roast, which almost always means you'll get plenty of crema, whereas the shot on the left was a light roast and has relatively little. Even if you account for the layer of crema at the top, immediately after pulling, the dark roast shot will have considerably more dissolved CO2, making it less dense. In the end, our dark roast shot is going to end up far more concentrated than our light roast. I'm a big fan of Bronson, but it's almost undrinkably sour when you pull it that strong. With espresso, using weighted measurements for both your input and output allows you to use a consistent recipe in a way volumetric measurements just don't. Take into further account that coffees will produce less crema as they age, and the value of weighing your shots becomes quite clear. If these two examples have helped explain why we consider the scale to be one of the most important tools for any coffee drinker, be sure to hit the like button. If you have any other questions about measurements or recipes, let me know in the comments below. For more coffee knowledge, tamp subscribe, and as always, thanks for watching.